Um, I think this might be one of the homework questions, or I might be confusing with the physics 10. So you know, call this 100 gram mass bar, and call this, uh, oh, sorry, Alice, and call this 500 gram mass bar, then these two are at the same angular position, as you can see on the screen. Right? And actually, let me uh, make, them the, uh, make them the same mass, so that you can kind of see the difference. Um, the only two masses I have the same ones over 200 grams. So um, should I write their names? OK. So this, the one that's on the inside is Alice for A. And one that's on the outside is Bob, or B for Bob. All right. So they're at the same angular position, right? Good. And as they move around, they remain at the same angular position. But if I start spinning it faster, something different happens with them. Let me move this away. I don't want to break anything. So as this starts to spin faster and faster, Bob slides out while Alice doesn't. Why? Like what? I mean, I thought they were at the same angular position. So what was the difference between Bob and Alice? That Bob slides up, but Alice doesn't. Yeah, so Bob is actually moving faster, right? You can see that the, li the linear velocity of Bob is faster. So when you look at this, so you can talk about the angular velocity, but sometimes you will want to talk about the velocity. So you, um, you should know how they are related. So the, um, let me call it this way. Uh, relationship between the rotational quantities, angle, angular velocity, angular acceleration, um, and the, root, um, the translational quantities, linear motion, position, velocity, and acceleration. And um, if I'm being perfectly clear, uh, as in non-ambiguous, uh, that's usually what I mean when I say clear, <laughs> not e anyways. Um, I should clarify that these, I mean these to be tangential quantities. As in when I talk about x, I don't really mean x in the sense of you know, moving from here. So you know, I put, sort of put them along the x-axis, right? When I say x, I don't mean position along your imaginary x-axis. That's not what I mean. When I talk about x, I'm talking about the motion along the circle, along the periphery of circle, or what we call tangential direction. So uh, what I want to briefly go over is the relationship between the angular quantities and the tangential motion-related quantities. Yeah? So. Let's start out with the velocity. I think that's the one that comes up most often, so maybe it's the most useful. So uh, let's say I know, uh, I know angular velocity somehow. It's given to me. I calculated it. I measured it. Somehow I know omega. And from omega, I want to be able to calculate what velocity or tangential velocity is. What do I need? Is uh, omega by itself sufficient, or do I need to know something else? So the, as you are trying to figure out the tangential velocity, what you, the one additional parameter you need to know is the, the distance from the center of rotation. Let me call that r. And that's kind of why we <laughs> use the word radius often for that, because we are imagining a circle that this is moving in the path of, and we are imagining radius of that imaginary circle. So let me uh, set aside this r. So does anybody in here know, using this r and omega, what the expression for tangential velocity should be? It's something that you can remember very, very, very easily if you remember how we define our angles. Or let me go back to the one example for position. Maybe it's uh, easier for position because you can visualize it better. So let's say I have, a, um, I have a change in angular position. And from knowing the change in angular position, I want to be able to get to some kind of change in the position. But um, it's not delta x in a straight line. It's delta x along the uh, circumference of the circle. So 
Um, so let me draw a picture to help us imagine what this looks like. So let me draw this circle here. This is my circle of radius r. And yes, yeah, someone was saying arc length, right? So what this delta x is, uh, it is arc length. So it comes down to the question of, all right, so you know the radius r. And let's say for this particular arc, you know the angle here, delta theta. How do you express this arc length? Uh, one person has opti, please. Yeah, this arc length is equal to, uh, trying to color code it, r times theta. Uh, theta I'm using, oh wait, I mixed up my colors. <laughs> um, okay, so after you, uh, how, how do you remember this formula? Why is the arc length r times delta theta? Well, 2 pi r? Yeah, yeah, so, okay. My question was actually kind of backward. So the proper way to remember this is remember how we defined the angle in the first place. It goes back to the definition of radian that we spent some class time on. Angle itself is actually defined as the arc length divided by, so you know, if I call this the arc length, delta x, then angle itself is actually defined. The definition of angle is the arc length divided by the radius. That's how radian is defined as angle. I, I know we went over this in class. I do this for every class. Yeah, uh, you know, the reason I'm pointing this out as definition is, the reason people don't remember the formulas that you ought to remember is because you don't remember definitions. So like, you know, trying to read a novel when you don't even know, uh, I don't know, um, what a fair is. Like you are trying, uh, whatever. Um, but so this is the relationship that you have to have completely internalized. And that means if someone wakes you up in the middle of the night and asks you what is the definition of angle, then this should be what pops out of you. Uh, if you have to think about it, then you haven't internalized it. So once you know this, then the rest of what I'm asking for here is simple matter of solving, doing a little bit of algebra. Solve this for delta x instead of delta theta then you get for arc length that's equal to the radius of the circle that you're imagining times the angle uh, delta theta. Okay. It's a very simple formula. And uh, for people who seem like they're forgetting it, the key reason you are forgetting it is because you didn't have a good geometry class. That's really what it comes down to. This is something that was covered in your geometry class. And if you understood the definition when it was being covered, or if, you, if it was covered, I don't know your geometry teacher, um, then there's no way you could forget this. Um, it, uh, so, you know, now is the time to remember. Because in those early classes, sometimes you can miss the fundamentals, and maybe because you're smart enough, you can kind of fake your way through. But with that, it's when it's your, you're at this higher level that missing those fundamentals will keep coming back to bite you. Because people will expect you to be able to simply figure out a tangential velocity, that's a very simple formula. That's just the radius times the angular velocity. Like people will expect you to know that. Because people who have good fundamentals will just recall back to this. And th that's just the relationship between tangential quantity and angular quantity. It's a sort of like, um, you know, if you're an immigrant to this country, there are some social customs, customs that you just miss because you didn't grow up here. And it's sort of similar here. The, uh, when you're working in the science and uh, math field, this is our culture. No, understanding the definition is, um, that's the underlying structure. So, you know, to the extent that you didn't have it so far, um, you know, this is a reminder, you know, go back, review it. Um, Make sure you really uh, understand um, this portion. If you have to reread the geometry textbook, do that. So, but that is the relationship between angular quantity and the, um, uh, the tangential or linear quantity. And it, this continues on from position, velocity, and acceleration. Um, you can look at it either the same relationship carrying over for different um, cases, 
Or you can look at it this way, taking this expression and just taking derivatives. When you take the first two derivatives, you get the velocity for left-hand side, and you get angular velocity for right-hand side from these relationships here, these relationships here. Or, and then if you take another derivative, then here you get angular acceleration, which can be used to express the acceleration or tangential acceleration. So by the way, this is another thing to point out. This tangential acceleration we are talking about, it has nothing absolutely to do with centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration was a radial acceleration. Uh, now that we are talking about rotation in full, it's especially important that you don't mix up tangential with radian, radial. It's two different directions. Once again, you know, if you find this confusing, read a book and um, you know, this uh, will hopefully be the very last time I have time to mention it in class. So um, you really have to uh, examine yourself to, know, to see if you have to review it more for yourself. Because I won't be able to cover, emphasize it more in class. We have to move on to the rest of the rotation. So tangential acceleration follows the same relationship here. This is equal to radius times angular acceleration. So these are all very simple relationships. And it's, com it's simple because it's coming from a simple definition. But once again, the thing with these simple things is that if you miss this fundamental step, none of this looks simple to you. It's just uh, another jumble of formulas that you are mixing up with your centripetal acceleration formula and a bunch of other formulas. It, it, it cannot be that way. This is based on definition. And this, uh, I, we place this almost at the level of definition. So, um, so once again, um, when people mix, start mixing up this, it really stems from uh, not just the, um, it really comes from the uh, fundamentally missing something. As in, so it, it, if you are getting mixed up with this, it's actually a sign that you need way more time to review. We, and you, know, you should be willing to go back, read, review it on your own time. Because once again, this is the very last time in the class I'm going to spend so much time on what should be fundamental thing that everyone should get. Yeah. OK, so, um, so this is a, um, sort of the introduction of the language that we'll be using. So uh, you know, when we talked about motion, kinematics, that was the language that we used to talk about the things that we were actually interested in. Forces, then from that we talked about work, energy, momentum. Um, yeah, work, energy, momentum, and I guess impulse. Um, so when we are dealing with the rotation, we are essentially retracing those steps again. So this is the language we'll use. And whenever we want to translate between what we did before, this side, to what we are doing now, then this is our translation table um, from you know, the linear quantities to the angular quantities. So, and we are going to use this language to discuss the dynamics that we are interested in rotation. One of them will be torque. We talked about that last week. And we are going to bring up um, energy in terms of rotational kinetic energy. And we are going to bring up something called angular momentum. That will be like the Thursday before your exam. Um, 